Here's the route we'll take. You start at the Grand Teton National Park sign, just north of Jackson. Head toward the Grovant River. Cross the two bridges. Cross the Kelly intersection. You've got to watch out for that one. Head on past the terraces. Then to the airport intersection. That one's not so bad. And then on up past the terraces. Opposite Blacktail Butte and up some really nice asphalt all the way to the tunnel. Just a little more. Then it's through the tunnel, across the Snake River Bridge, and the Visitor Center. And here we are at the sign that I was talking about. Believe it or not, the Tetons are out there on the horizon to the left. So it's time to grab the trusty board and head up to the pathway. The quality of the asphalt is really good. It's just too bad you can't see the Tetons out there, but really, honestly, they're there. And there's that sign in the background. I left the sound as it is. It's not a quiet stroll through the woods. You're right next to the highway and there's plenty of highway noise. But you can see the attractive S's that they put into the path. Makes it a little bit more interesting. Now the first objective will be that group of trees out there. That's where the first bridge is. Another thing you have to watch for. This is a multi-use path but some cyclists seem to think that it belongs to them. Uh, you'll see what happens when this guy encounters me. The usual etiquette is on your right, on your left. This guy just hovered there and then acted annoyed that I didn't get out of his way immediately. He's one of the very few, but it does happen. So when you get out here, keep an eye open. I just happened to see him out of the corner of my eye and got out of his way. There we are. Here's the first bridge over the Grovant River. It's a rather gutsy little four and a half to five percent grade. But the bummer is that Right where the asphalt meets the bridge, it's just a little bit rough. Yeah, you can't win them all. But the bridges are very nicely designed. And once again, this is the first bridge, the south bridge, over the Grovant River. And then the pathway drops down into the floodplain of the Grovant and winds through the trees a bit. In a few more weeks I'm sure that the fall colors will be very pretty down here when everything goes to gold. Now just in case you're wondering, that tall fence you see on the right, that's the boundary of the Elk Refuge, National Elk Refuge, and yeah, there are elk back there. And it's uh, not a bad idea to keep them off the highway. There you can just see the second bridge right on the horizon between the trees. It's another very nice bridge, but also very close to the highway. Plenty of noise. So, really, you have to enjoy this for the views when there isn't plenty of fire smoke. And you have to enjoy it for the wonderful smoothness of the uh, asphalt. 
the one thing I can say about the federal government is their specifications for the pathways is really good because it's nice and hard, nice and smooth. They're now on the horizon. You can see some signs up there. That's the intersection that leads to the little town of Kelly. Ah, uh, it can be pretty active as you can see right here. And I really suggest get off your board and run this thing. Once you're past, things really quiet down and it's just a uh, one and a half to two percent grade for most of the way. From here on out, it's more enjoying the scenery and the trip, and the mountains if you could see them. There's Blacktail Butte there, and these are the terraces I was talking about earlier. And. One of the few people you ever see in this stretch early in the morning. morning. Should have a chipmunk here. Where is the chipmunk? There it is. <laughs> What's that? You're doing good. It looks fun. It is. It is. As far as path traffic is concerned, this is a very quiet stretch. It's just flat, heading across the sagebrush, and once again it's at one, one and a half, two percent grade, pretty relentless. And there's some rabbit brush. That's pretty much the only wildflower that at this time of year, that would be the uh, last part of August, that blooms in this part of the country. It's pretty dry. That's still black tail beat on the right. And we're fast approaching the tunnel. There's the sign. Now the interesting thing about this tunnel is I had no idea what to expect, so I was way too conservative. I could have used that nice downhill and just blasted my way through this thing. That's why I'm laughing. I realized that I was uh, such a fool on this. All right, that's Blacktail Butte in the background. Heading up to what I call the Dornan intersection. This is where it gets a little tense. You can barely see the Tetons there. All right, here we are at the Dornan intersection. That is the Snake River Bridge. And now you get to see the Tetons. It doesn't look like much, but it's four to five percent grade and it gets just a little tight toward the bottom and you'll see what I'm getting at. Uh, once again I I felt really silly doing this what can I say uh, <laughs> foot braking to keep my speed down but I had tried this once before and you'll see coming up why I did this at the at the very start then let loose. We've got pedestrians got cyclists, 
you really don't have much of a way out if you get into trouble. And the first time through, I thought, well, hey, I've done steeper than this before, so I just let it loose. It turns out that right there where the asphalt meets the bridge, there's a really, really gnarly expansion crack. And my only option was to bail at that point, because it just stopped the board cold. So this time, I had an idea of what was going on, and I uh, definitely knew how to handle it when I got there. And there's the Snake River. As you can see, it's right under the flight path of the Jackson Airport. Now you're coming to a very congested area here. Cars, people, dogs, you name it. Uh, you have to pretty much stay under control here, so if something pops out after at you, you have a way out. This intersection isn't so bad, but uh, I'm going to turn here. It's this intersection. That's the main, what is called the inner road of the park, right near the actual, you have to pay for it, entrance. Tourists have one thing in their mind here, getting into the park. I suggest you get off the board and do like I did, run. The visitor center is straight ahead. You can't see it, but it's there. And I definitely advise you, do not go down the pathway. It's blind. You can fly down here just as fast as the legal limit on a motor vehicle. So stick to the road here and keep your eyes open. Because typically what happens, you get to an intersection, and this is... This is what happens right here. This guy has no idea where he wants to go. And you don't know what he's going to do next. And there's the visitor center. It's a good place to tank up on water if you need it, uh, take a break if you need it. I didn't, I just wanted to turn around and retrace my steps. Now def definitely keep in mind that people seeing you here are going to be on foot usually. Once again, most of them are tourists. They don't know what to expect when they see somebody coming at them on a skateboard. So, uh, you know, be as polite as you can and stay alert. And now it's back up to the intersection, heading for the bridge. Now here's where you want to build up some speed. With the wide angle lens on that small camera, it doesn't look like much, but that's a 4 to 5 percent grade with a nice little turn in it and periodically there are going to be people coming at you. So you definitely want to have some nice speed going, get in a really good rhythm 
and be able to have enough inertia going to where you can stay in one lane. It's true, I was a happy camper after making that hill. It is a bit challenging. So now we head south again. And here is the really fun part. Of course, we've been going up a 1 to 2 percent grade all the way north. Now we're heading back south. It took an hour to go the distance uphill. It took only 41 minutes going back. You could really fly along. The average speed was around about 13 miles an hour. Even these two were impressed. That's the North Bridge again. You have to make sure and build up some speed for the south bridge. It climbs fairly steeply on the north side. Not only do you see cyclists and walkers out here, but you'll also see people like this guy on their roller skis. That little downhill is very handy. It gives you a little bit of rest before the climb out of the floodplain. And it does get steep toward the end. And here's that last steep climb. Karen's been doing the long shots here. <laughs> As you can tell, the smoke was getting to her. And that color, by the way, is accurate. The smoke tends to filter out the blue. And so you have an overall sort of a reddish, orangey, yellowish hue to everything. But that's what it looked like. It's just one of those things in the West. Something somewhere is going to burn when it gets pretty dry. And it's not unusual in the Tetons to have conditions like this.
And now that final run to the parking lot for a victory lap. Yep, that was a rock. It was fun. You really ought to try it.